Welcome to Battle of the Missing Chromosomes, where we explore the quality of upcoming unreleased cards in competitive decks. The paper gameplay is accelerated, edited, and accompanied by gameplay statistics, all to determine if the new cards are worthy of taking home the elusive Missing Chromosome. Today's deck focuses on two new cards, one of those being Mox Amber. Mox Amber is an artifact that costs zero that says, tap, add one mana of any color among legendary creatures and planeswalkers you control. So the problem with this card is that most legendary creatures and planeswalkers cost more than a few mana, and having Mox Amber out on turn three or turn four kind of defeats the purpose of having an artifact that costs zero. But there are a few low costing legendary creatures, including Norrin the Wary and Kithian, and both of those cards happen to be humans. And there's also more legendary humans, including Thalia and Thalia. And if you cram all those cards into one deck, you get the deck we have here. It's Boros Humans with Mox Amber. And when it works, it really works. Because with the right cards in hand, we can get an extra mana each turn starting on turn one. So for example, opening hand, say we play Mox Amber, followed by Kithian. And because Kithian is legendary, we can use Mox Amber to produce one white and play something like Champion the Parish. And being able to play two creatures turn one is quite gangster but what's even more gangster is that by turn two you can play something like magus of the moon or the big thalia and either of those cards as early as turn two is very very good for you and very hard for your opponent to deal with now i did say there's a second new card in the deck which there is and that is dauntless bodyguard dauntless bodyguard is a 2-1 human that says when it enters the battlefield choose another creature you control and you can sacrifice dauntless bodyguard whenever to make that creature indestructible so compared to mox amber it isn't as exciting but a 2-1 for one isn't bad and its ability is quite good if you pair it with something like champion of the parish or even Kithian. A few more things to point out here. Starting with Norn, I think most people know how Norn works. Basically, it keeps leaving and then entering the battlefield, causing champion to trigger, causing Thalia's lieutenant to trigger. But there are a few more cool tricks you can do with Norn. For example, you can attack with Kithian, Norn, and another creature. And because Norn attacks before it gets exiled, Kithian will still trigger. Another cool trick is with Smuggler's Copter. Because Norn is so hard to kill because it leaves every time someone plays a spell, it's very resilient, and you can use Norn to crew Smuggler's Copter. Other than that, we have Lightning Bolt, 19 lands, including a Ganjo Castle, and that's pretty much the deck. So on to the gameplay but uh kind of bad news here sometimes after you put a gazillion hours into editing a video you find out the file somewhere along the way got corrupted so you redo the editing and then after redoing that editing you find out that that one also got corrupted so you redo it a third time and finally it works so you continue to edit the file including life totals color correction speed correction the commentary all that and the file that you thought worked after all turns out it didn't work after all and you can't use it and you also can't get back those 80 hours you spent editing that stuff and you're just like i could have read a book or I could have left my house for the first time in weeks, but you know, whatever. But the good news is that I was able to salvage like a third of the footage and also the statistics. So all is not lost. So I do apologize for that, but the footage is pretty cool. So uh, maybe less is better sometimes. I, I don't know, but here it is. And I hope you enjoy it. The first matchup is against Eldrazi Tron and Amber Humans has a pretty good shot at it because of cards like Magus of the Moon, the Thalias, and just having a lot of little creatures that can end the game quickly. So we'll see how it goes. And yeah, so opening hand, Humans looks pretty good here mox amber kithian and humans is on the play so we do see that kithian followed by mox amber and playing dauntless bodyguard now Drazi tron not a slow deck but it is going to struggle to deal with two creatures out on turn one so turn two we see thalia come out that's pretty good against tron considering that almost all their lands are non-basic so they would have had Eldrazi temple times two out on that turn but the player just had to play it and tapped and we also see a thalia's lieutenant here i mean humans really just moving in quickly you see attacks here this attack is going to flip kithian as well and Eldrazi tron already down to six all they've played is Expedition Map, which they can't even use because their land came in tap. Uh, we do see Thought Knot here, and they pass back. It doesn't really matter at this point because the attacks here, they will be lethal, and that's the game. So very, very good performance from humans. So on to game two. Opening hands look pretty good for both players. I do see a Chalice of the Void in the Eldrazi Tron player's hand, and without Mox Amber, it'll be quite hard for humans to outspeed Eldrazi Tron considering they have Chalice of the Void. We see a Champion of the Parish turn one, back to Eldrazi Tron, and we do see that Chalice. So how will humans get around this? There's a Kithian in hand, Lightning Bolt in hand. Both are shut off by Chalice. There's a Thalia's Lieutenant, and Eldrazi Tron goes down to 17. Thought Knot comes out, takes the Thalia. Ooh, man, this is going really fast. I'm trying to keep up here. Oh, yeah, and, and Tron's active for Eldrazi Tron. Yeah, that, okay, cool. And back to humans. They play Thalia to get Champion up to a 4 4. But Thalia doesn't do too much here because Tron's already at 7 mana and no attacks. We do see a Basilisk Caller from Eldrazi Tron, but they can't play it because of Chalice. And what will they do with this 8 mana here? Nothing, it seems, because it's going back to humans. And humans doesn't have any plays with that Chalice hurting them pretty hard. And Eldrazi Eldrazi Tron passes back. So neither player having the right cards to close out the game. And Eldrazi Tron back to them. And we do see finally a walking ballista. That's very, very good against humans, especially when it's a 6-6. Six, six. So that's six damage that they can spill onto all the creatures. And it's one short of being lethal to all three creatures. And with that, humans draws another land, can't play anything in their hand, and just passes back. And Eldrazi Tron finishing off the champion before anything comes out and pumps ballista up to a 5-5 five, five again. Swings for four. And ouch, humans draws another land. So not a deck with a lot of land 
lands, but there are a lot of lands here. And human just passes back, Ballista pings, leaving the Thalia. And back on Jossie Chan's turn, pumping Ballista again. And at this point, not much they can do. And they scoop. Okay. So on to game three. Just kidding. Game three got corrupted. Okay. But here are the game statistics for the Eldrazi Tron matchup. 13 games were played in total, and 54% of them going to humans. So not a complete blowout, but humans definitely holding its own. And interestingly, even though Mox Amber was really good, just simply playing it wasn't always enough. It was very hit or miss. In the games where Mox Amber was played, only 43% of those games went to humans. And that's because sometimes you just draw Mox Amber when you're trying to close out a game and it's like really awkward. So Mox Amber, really good if it's in your opening hand with a legendary. But then there's times where there's no legendary or Mox Amber comes late and it's just really awkward, which is why Mox Amber feels quite a bit below Mox Opal because Mox Opal works well on Affinity because it's an artifact itself. So even if you pull Mox Opal late, you can still use it for cranial plating and sacrificing it for Arcbound Ravenger and stuff like that. And Mox Amber is just really difficult to compare to Mox Opal because Mox Opal is a lot more relevant in more situations. But anyway, moving on. Surprisingly, Dauntless Bodyguard was pretty good in the games where Bodyguard was played. 57% of those games went to humans. It didn't really feel that good in the game, but it is a 2-1 one for 1. And against Eldrazi Tron, where it can sometimes be a bit slow, Bodyguard was pretty good. Moving on to the next matchup, White Red Prison. White Red Prison has things to delay the game, like Chalice of the Void, Anger of the Gods, Wrath of the Gods, stuff like that, and hopes to finish with things like Nahiri, Chandra, and Gideon. Now, before we get too excited, uh, all the games got corrupted except for one. Oops. And that game wasn't really the most reflective of the other games, but here it is, and I hope you enjoy it anyway. Open hands look very similar to game one, but this time, Prison Player does have Simeon Spirit Guide in hand, so they can turn one Chalice, and that's exactly what we're seeing here. Chalice comes out, it's going to be very hard for humans now, because if you look at their hand, every card in their hand seems to cost one, I believe. So right now, it's just Champion, and I don't think that's going to be good enough to win against Prison, because Prison, once you get into late game, is very, very powerful, between Chandra and Nahiri, and also getting into a lot of things there. So it looks like Prison's not going to do anything this turn, but they really don't need to do anything, though, because they're already pretty good right now. And we do see humans pull Magus to the Moon, not the best card to use against Prison, and Prison itself does run Blood Moons, and we do see Magus, but mostly to pump the Champion, and Champion swings in for two, puts it down to 17, and back to Prison Player. We see a Scalding Tarn, but nothing else, and there is a Thalia there, so they can play that, and Thalia comes out. Now, Humans has a shot here, and swings in for five. Will the Prison Player respond? And yes, and they take out the Champion, and with a life gain, they go back to 18, back on Prison Player's turn, they're at four lands now, and plays Nahiri, exiles the Magus, and then back on Humans Player's turn, they can kill the Nahiri, and that's what they do here, they attack the Nahiri, Nahiri goes bye-bye, but then passes back to Prison, and plays another Nahiri, and it looks like they're exiling the Thalia as well. So now Humans in a really tough spot here. There's Nahiri out, a Chalice out, and I'm not sure they can do anything. Yeah, they just pass back. And this is exactly what White Red Prison wants to do. It wants to stabilize the game early on. And all it really takes is one Planeswalker to seal the game. Because with Nahiri out, we have a clock now. Because once it hits eight, it's game over. And we also see a Chandra. Well, now there's an extra timer. Because the Chandra can deal two damage each turn. But once it hits seven, it can ultimate. And whenever they play a spell, it deals five damage to target player or creature. So the end is near for humans. They pull Norin. Nope. So Prison continuing the dick slappage and falls up with a Gideon. It's pretty gangster. And again, human player just passes back. It's kind of sad. Kind of sad. Gideon swinging in, putting humans down to eight. And next turn, Emrakul can come out. And yeah, everything in the human's hands cost one. So it's night night because here comes Emrakul. Yay. So humans in White Red Prison went on to play six games. And despite humans losing the game we watched, humans went on to win 67% of the games. So a pretty good performance from humans. And it would have been nice if there were more games played to get better statistics. But in all the games where Mox Amber was played, humans happened to win 100% of the games. And the same was true for Dauntless Bodyguard. In all the games that it was played, humans won all of those. So again, it would have been nice to have more than six games played to get better statistics. But I am pleased with how Mox Amber and Dauntless Bodyguard performed. And that brings us to our last matchup, humans versus Merfolk Wizards. And if you've seen the last video, then it should look very familiar because it's the exact same deck with Nabin and Chalice. I'm not exactly sure how it's going to go, but I think humans are going to have a hard time with Merfolk just because the cards like Harbinger of the Tides between Bounce Creatures and Water Tap Weaver between Tap Creatures. And humans is a deck where its power comes from its momentum, getting Champion of the Parish up to a really big creature. And if that gets bounced by Harbinger of the Tides, then all that momentum will get sucked away. And the fact that Nabin is in Merfolk means those abilities get doubled. So double bouncing, double tapping. And it's not even considering that Chalice of the Void is in the deck as well, which also hurts humans as we saw in the last two matchups. So if humans is going to win, they're going to have to do it really quickly. So we'll have to see what happens. And here it is. Opening hand, humans looks all right, but with Mox Amber and no Legendary, not the best start. But Merfolk has a pretty good start. Ether Vile turn one, they did have a Chalice in hand. Humans does put Champion out. And will we see Chalice here? Yes, we do. So back to humans, they pull Kithian. That is the legendary they need, but with Chalice out, they can't play it. So humans swings in and passes back to Merfolk. And Merfolk turns Mean Vault into a creature, swings in for two, and also vials in a Harbinger to bounce Champion. And
and the dick slappage is quite strong because it's chalice out the human player can't just simply replay the card and harbinger and chalice work very very well together as you can see and the merfolk playing water tap weaver to make matters worse for humans the merfolk player taking a card with vendillion click and then humans playing thalia and the card that vendillion took was magus of the moon we see another thalia's lieutenant here because the thalia does allow for mox amber to tap finally and it's back to merfolk so merfolk player playing another water tap weaver taking out the thalia and then merfolk swing in for a bunch and then passes back to humans well nothing the human player can do except pass back and there's master of waves and that's seven tokens that's pretty good it's pretty good and oh boy another one so both master of waves pumping the tokens giving them plus two plus two and that will do it not much of a match humans really struggling hard in that one the opponent did have chalice but it was really the harbingers that won it, it seemed and the water tap weavers and as for game statistics there were a total of seven games played with only 29 percent of those going to humans so merfolk having a really strong matchup against humans because with cards like harbinger and water tap weaver it's really hard for humans to gain any momentum and mox amber having little to no effect here because nab and wizards was just too much for the deck so in conclusion in deciding who gets the missing chromosomes in the matchup of humans versus eldrazi tron it was pretty close but the missing chromosome has to go to amber humans i liked how fast it was i liked how mox amber performed and as for the prison matchup again the missing chromosome has to go to amber humans despite all the prisons removal and creature disruption amber humans piercing through very fast to close it out but the only thing standing in amber humans way nave and merfolk it just wrecks creature decks like humans so in this matchup the missing chromosome has to go to to Naben Merfolk. But I think what we learned from this video was that both Amber Humans and Naben Merfolk are very, very powerful decks. And I'm looking forward to seeing how both of them do when they finally come out. But that is all for now. If you enjoyed the video despite the lack of gameplay, and I am sorry about that, be sure to subscribe. Let me know in the comments what you thought. And as always, I hope you have a great day.